Lamenting loss. Grief is unpredictable. It does not come in neat stages or formulas or manageable processes. Two very close friends of mine lost their husbands over the past year. Pris and Virginia live just blocks from each other. And so I've made a point of checking on them. I know they're going through a lot of grief. The first, you know, the first holidays, first birthdays, first anniversaries. I know it's hard. Their grief is real. Grief comes in bursts. Out of nowhere, tears from the most unexpected things, a familiar smell, a, a sound, a song on the radio, a TV, or even a line from a movie. You can't plan for grief. When I lost my dad at age 69 to cancer, I was crushed to the core. Although I was in my early 30s with three children of my own, I was like a little girl. I was four years old again. My daddy was gone. He was the first, best, most loved man in all of my life. He was the one I turned to when I was happy or sad or just needed some sound advice. Dad had the demeanor of calm, quiet. He was a force of confidence in any storm. Dad had the same answer for any dilemma that forced me as a, or you know, came to me as a child, as a teenager, even as an adult. Regardless of what it was, if I went to Dad in panic and said, Dad, I don't have enough money to buy pom-poms for my cheerleading team, Dad would say, Connie, the good Lord will provide. In jerky sobs, Dad, Carrie and I broke up. Conwin, the good Lord will provide. In a huff. I don't even know why I have to take this horrible geometry. Why do I even need to sit through this? It makes no sense. Well, the good Lord will provide. Hmm, I'm not sure how the good Lord provided on that one, but I did manage to squeak through with a C. In July of 1975, Dad, do you want me to stay home and help with mom's recovery? I know it's hard since she had that stroke. I don't need to go to college. Nope, Connie, you follow your plans. And then in a weary tone, the good Lord will provide. Even after I moved from my house and went on to pursue my education, Whatever I was dealing with, Dad always had that same response. I would call home, Hey, Dad, my clunky car is making a funny sound. Hey, Dad, I'm not sure about this marriage thing. Hey, Dad, I'm afraid to give birth to a baby. His response was the same. I knew it. Regardless, the good Lord would provide. And the good Lord did. Even now as I record this lament, I can hear his voice in my head. I can hear him from the time I was very early saying what he believed was true and the two things that I've carried through my whole life. God believed that God would provide, or my dad believed God would provide. My dad's faith was strong and it was practical. And from prom dresses to um, anything that came into my life, my dad modeled a trust that never diminished. When he was diagnosed with cancer in October of 1996, he was going to power through it. And he did after endless trips to the oncologist for radiation and chemotherapy until after two years he finally said in October of 1998 no more 
He said, I'd rather live out my last months at home with my family than be going in and out of treatment and being so sick. My dad was a constant source of comfort for us. When we gathered in early November for his last birthday, or for our last family Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, each picture taken around that table marked his fast decline. We grieved as we watched him. He lost his appetite. He slurred his words. He stayed in his chair most of the time. And I knew it was close when he quit getting up to wash the dishes. We all grieved, but we tried not to do it in front of Dad. We wanted him to know that we had the same kind of courage he did. I tried not to cry, but Dad knew. I know grief. When I got that call on Tuesday morning, January 11th, grief hit me like a wave. I left work and I cried all the way up 395 to Colville. Now I could cry out loud. I could scream. I could let out every doubt and every sense of pain because he was gone for real, for good. Like he wished, Dad died at home with Mom, holding him in her arms. He was strong in his faith right up to the end. Here's the thing I know about my dad. Here's the thing I know about grief that is true. Maybe this lament of mine will help one of you. Dad's not in a box, in the ground, in a plot, in a cemetery, on a hill overlooking Colville Valley. He's alive with his good Lord. And like his headstone simply says, for sure, for sure.